It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Monday evening, August 21st. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro tonight. Crude is bearish and trying to retest last week's low and looking for a two-legged correction up in the battle zone for selling opportunities on Tuesday. S&P is range-bound with a pendulum swing telling us to look for selling opportunities up at the measured move resistance, maybe yesterday's high for a target going back down today's low. Don't forget the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is range-bound and trading at the highs, telling us to focus on failures to sell back down to the range tomorrow. Gold is bullish with a spike in range, telling us to use the two tri rule to buy in the battle zone below that range tomorrow and of course wrapping up tonight on the euro the euro is bullish and we're looking for a two-legged pullback to buy it cheap on the way up to retest last week's high we're back after a beautiful summertime weekend here in los angeles hope you guys had a great weekend out there as well we survived the eclipse we survived barely survived the eclipse i've been in the office all day uh but safe and sound here though in our corporate headquarters here in los angeles my eyes are working perfectly here and i get a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals here this evening before i jump in and put the plan together for tuesday i do want to remind you the only place to watch the full length version of this video is here on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com if you're watching the video right now on our youtube channel not to worry there's a link in the description of that youtube video follow that link in the description of that youtube video and come join me here on the blog at sideways markets for the full length version while you're here don't forget join the mailing list I'll send you an email every evening when the nightly newsletter goes live. Follow me on social, lower left-hand corner, stock to it, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever your flavor of choice. Follow me on social media for important charts, links, and updates throughout the week. And don't forget to grab those charts. How easy is that? All the charts from tonight's video. That's right. You can have them on your computer tomorrow. You can download those charts. Follow that link. Pull the video on the blog at Sideways Markets. And what are you waiting for? Grab that free pass. Don't miss this opportunity to learn more about everything we do here at School Trade. Grab that free pass. You will not be disappointed. You'll learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can pretty much guarantee you that. And if you got any questions, you got questions, I've got answers. I always love to answer your guys' questions. Hit me up on live support on the right-hand side of the website. Hope you guys had a great, great weekend. I had a little wedding to go to. Had a little family and friends in town this weekend. Feels great to be back. But you know what? We're only as good as our next trade. Let's get ready for this week here. Get a big, big week ahead of us. Last full week of the month of August. We do have a full week ahead of us here this week. Uh, a little bit of news on Thursday and Friday. Well, kind of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we have, uh, yeah, we got, we got what, four days next week as well. So last full week here, but really... Monday through Friday this week and Monday through Thursday next week. And then we're talking Labor Day weekend. I can't even believe it. We'll talk more about that early, early next week. Tomorrow, though, in the meantime, let's focus down on tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Tuesday, August the 22nd. All we really have tomorrow morning is that retail sales number, right, from our good friends to the north, right? So not a lot on the calendar here for tomorrow. We got the zoo we got the zoo survey at 5 o'clock, industrial trend survey at uh, 6 a.m. I'm not expecting these to move the markets too much here tomorrow morning. Um, so pretty much our, 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 our eyes are focused on that 9 o'clock opening bell on – oh, sorry, 8.20 opening bell on golden currencies. 9 o'clock open on the energies, right, crude oil. Uh, 10 o'clock, the old 10 o'clock shock, top of the hour, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock – the transition into lunch. So 8:20 a.m. metals and currencies, 9 o'clock crude oil or you know energy, nat gas and crude. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock shock, top of the hour, 10 o'clock, and of course 11 o'clock we have that transition into lunch. These are key milestones we follow every day in our trade room. And as I always remind you, you don't need to go at this alone every day. Come on, join me tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We open up our trade room 8 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday with all of our advanced members. So let's jump right in. Look forward to seeing you there with me tomorrow morning. Let's jump right in. We got some crude, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and we'll wrap up tonight on the euro. Crude is bearish and trying to retest yesterday's low. So my plan is to look for selling opportunities up in that battle zone overhead using traps, failures. Would love to get above that moving average, right, for a nice two-legged pullback. Basically, the goal is let's get this thing up off these recent lows get us into an area of resistance that will attract enough sellers into the market right when everybody has a nice big target waiting below 
They should have enough sellers in the market to sell this thing right back down to the low. And again, uh, ultimate targets here right now, we assume, are down to that prior day low with the big, big carrot at the end of the stick down at that prior week low at 46.62. So 46.62 is, is definitely where everyone is trying to go here this week, right? Last week, of course, last week's low was actually last Thursday's low. If you recall, last Friday was rollover, right? This is the 1017 contract. So we had our little rollover uh, shindig on uh, right on Friday. Beautiful. I will, I'll take a rollover on Friday every day of the week. Get it out of the way. That way we're back here in the action right on Monday. So early in, early out, roll over Friday. We talked about that last week. Now, what's what's amazing though is is this strong, right, short covering rally on Friday. Again, blame it on rollover. But you'll notice though, they couldn't hold it together and the bottom falls out of it. And now it's it's pretty obvious. This whole move up was just short covering on rollover, right? Tudor's getting out of positions, they can get it back in. And now Obviously, bears have control on the way down. So we know where they're hunting, right? They're hunting down to that prior day low. And again, I think I think all eyes are on that prior week low down at 46.62. Uh, with that, right, with that, going to falling resistance trend line. That resistance trend line just might be our best friend here for tomorrow. I really hope that we get price going that high. That would be wonderful if we could sell up around that 48.20 area, 48.26 being that key reverse line right the only reversal line by the way that hasn't been retested yet we also have that bear channel this bear channel you can see gorgeous rotation even a little bit of an overshoot right there right so overshoot overshoot on the opposite side so we expect that pendulum to swing back up in the opposite direction that leads me to be looking at Areas like 47.88, 48.16, again, that naked reversal line at 48.26, and that falling resistance level coming down overhead. The goal is pretty simple. I want to see this price go up so I can sell it back down. And if it goes down, I want to be... I want to avoid selling too low. If it goes down, then we start looking for those traps, right, to avoid selling low, right? Anytime we find ourselves in a position where the only option is to sell low, we, of course, want to sell high with traps above the moving average. So with that said, some of the things we're looking for here tomorrow, one scenario here obviously is going to be a trap high, right, trap high above that swing at 88. A lot of times what happens is those traps, they end up doing this, right? Trap high into failure and then back down, right? So trap high, failure, in fact, look at it like this too. Trap high, failure, pull back, back down, right? Trap high, failure, pull back, back down, right? So trap high, buyer failure at the moving average, pull back to the moving average, right, for continuation as we go back lower. That's obviously three different patterns there. Um, we'll know more once we, right, once we get there. Maybe we get lucky. Maybe we get a nice, big, two-legged pullback here tomorrow. When I say two-legged pullback, what I mean is we'll start developing higher here as a trend line, and then we can use that trend line as resistance overhead, right? The name kind of comes from the two legs, right? One leg, and then two leg, right? Two legged pullback, right? Not to be taken literally, right? There'll be more than two, just tiny legs in there. But again, two, one, pull back, two up, right? And then back down, we go from there. Again, that will probably have us using that trend line overhead. I would love to incorporate some of these levels of resistance to sell it back down again. Um, we also might see a trading range here. You know, I wouldn't be totally surprised about this. You know, keep an eye out for possibly a trading range developing here going sideways. Anytime we see a trading range, we always know one try, two try, and then back down in, right? Focus on failures, selling high above the top of that range because it's a bear bias. Uh, what if price goes lower? What if price goes lower? You know, what if we don't see a correction higher here to sell back down? What if price goes lower? If price goes lower here, what you then all of a sudden have to worry about is is selling too low, right? So at that point now, find some prior swings, get that price up, traps, right, and sell from there. The key is, if we're gonna roll over and go lower, I'm perfectly fine selling down here. I just need to make sure we see some strength going lower, kind of push back those buyers a little bit, give them some breathing room, that, right, so strong, you know, think about it, strong move down, that strong move down now allows us to sell high, comparably speaking, right? See, selling high 
you've got to have two points of interest, right? You can have two things uh, to to to, uh, to kind of uh, compare, right? If I if I see a strong move down, I can then sell high with some pretty good confidence. The key is just don't, right? Just don't sell low as it's moving, right? As it's moving lower. So again, watch out for that price up and back down. Watch for the you know, again, possible sideways range here, up and back down. And again, watch that move lower. Focus your energy on traps, right, rather than selling down into these prior day lows, right, and prior week low. Um, how do we turn bullish? What does it take for a bear market to turn bullish? No, not just higher highs and higher lows. Three things, strength pullback and strength, right? Strength meaning I want to see a very strong move higher, right? Basically, the amount of strength going lower is what I need to see going higher. Then I need that pullback to hold. Pullback to hold, and my definition of a pullback holding is pullback and then make some higher highs from there, right? If we can see an explosive move, strength, pullback, and explode higher, we got to give the ball to the bulls, right? And be looking for buying opportunities on the way back up to retest last Friday's high up there at 48.90. But be very careful, though, because if it does go higher, strength, pullback, can't hold, yeah, then that will likely collapse right back down. So be careful, buyers. Don't try to just guess. Don't try to predict the bottom. Just because we think it's gone too far doesn't mean the rest of the market agrees with us. So avoid selling low. Make sure we sell high. Two-legged corrections. Traps above swings. Buyer failures above moving averages. And again, we're going to be in our trade room tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, and don't forget, don't forget, I know you guys, a lot of you guys, right, love to come out and join that free trial. If you haven't done so yet, right, make sure you over to the, head over to schooloftrade.com and make sure you join that free trial, right, that we can learn all about the who, what, where, when, and why. If you love the newsletter, you'll love our free trial. Let's keep going. How about some S&P? Boy, the S&P, both the E-minis, S&P and the NASDAQ, uh, they get a little bit of a case of the Mondays here today, right? Summertime Monday, it might be a little bit of an eclipse style, right? Eclipse uh, uh, session here today. It definitely felt like we had some folks that were staring off in the, into the uh, in the space here today, the way the S and P and Nasdaq felt. S and P is range bound, and the recent pendulum swing is giving us clues that we need to stay patient. Look for selling opportunities using the two try rule going back down to the range again tomorrow. The goal is to look for buyer failures using the many resistance levels we have overhead with a measured move and that prior day high, right, always being kind of our top priority. Now you can see here we have that trading range kind of right in the middle. You know, this is one of those charts where just it didn't really go anywhere. You know, market went down, it went up, it just it hasn't really gone very far. You'll notice we're kind of sitting around that prior week low. Market got kicked back below that prior week low. So I'm, I'm definitely expecting to see some rotation higher here. How long that how long that move higher will last, right, we'll have to wait and see. Most important thing right now I want to point your attention to is the trading range, right? It's a flat moving average sideways. It's not, it's not one of those trading ranges that just smacks you across the face. It's not a real obvious trading range. You could probably draw it a little bit narrower or wider depending on, you know, kind of, how, kind of what your, uh, your personal opinions of ranges. I wouldn't, you know, obviously the most important things are the extremes, Right, always whenever we trading range, always focus on its extremes. Right, I want to sell off the high, I want to buy off the low. One thing though, interesting here about this range is don't forget about what we call the pendulum swing. Right, so range rotation, range rotation. Well, when we when we break out of a trading range, the amount of that breakout, right, the amount of that breakout, let's say for example, we break out below the low of that range. That amount of that breakout is usually just about, if I can eyeball this, just about as much, right, as we get on the opposite side. Now what if I can do is, is if I can incorporate some additional levels of resistance up here, you know, incorporate the pendulum swing along with maybe a measured move or a prior day high, right, or some level of resistance up there, then I can use that pendulum swing to give me a basic idea of where to be looking for that failure. When I think pendulum swing, 
pendulum swing helps identify where the best location will be. But it's not going to be, you know, pinpoint precision, right? It's going to be the general area. So we're looking for the area up here, right, to be selling up around that pendulum swing. So when I go back to the chart now, there's my trading range, right? Here's the old pendulum swing. Now, speaking, speaking of traps and failures, you want to learn more about our patterns? Want to learn more about how we use technical analysis combined with our trade setups to find a statistical edge over the opposite side of the market? Absolutely. I hope you do. Join our free trial on the homepage of schooloftrade.com and learn more about what it feels like to be in our trade room, what it means to be a client, and all the trading strategies that we learn here at School of Trade. Don't forget, while you're here, learn more about our beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes. We have great flexible payment options for our advanced membership. I can break that membership enrollment fee into small bite-sized pieces. Reach out. I'm always here to answer your questions. Hit me up on live support 24-7. 365. Great to be back here with you guys and gals here today. Beautiful big week ahead of us here as we as we go into the last few drops of the summertime season. Kids are going back to school at the end of this week here in Los Angeles. I'm sure they're starting to get their school supplies back together where you are. You know what that means, right? We're going to the best time of the year. Once those kids go back to school, it's party on for the fall season, which all goes all the way to the end of spring, end of March, and we are looking forward to the best time of the year to be a trader. Got any questions? Hit me up on live support. Drop me an email. Post a comment. I'm always here to help. My name is Joseph. If I don't see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time, I look forward to seeing you guys same time, same place tomorrow. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.